Jersey Reserves. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, to my, my friends uh, in this assembly, thank you for your friendship. Uh, and to uh, the chairman of the committee, uh, we have developed a wonderful relationship. And uh, sometimes we spar, and your staff and our staff, and, but we're a family. And families do disagree from time to time, but generally speaking, we're, we're headed in the same direction. That direction is making America a better place for everyone and solving problems. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for your very generous, kind comments, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and, and Mr. Speaker, I, I would just say uh, that it's been a real delight and joy to work with the Chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee. I, I would have to admit it was a more delight and joy to work with the ranking member of the Energy and Commerce Committee when I was chairman, but uh, that's the way of the world and that's democracy. And we switched roles and handed off the gavel and peace and, uh, and we began to, to, to approach issues from a different angle but with the same mission. Mr. Speaker, as 2020 comes to a thankful close, I think we're all ready to get it behind us, so does uh, my 22 years of public service in this incredible crucible of democracy, the United States House of Representatives. I want to start by thanking my wife of 38 years and our, our son, uh, who is 30, Malene and Anthony. They have always supported me during my three decades of state and federal service, all the campaigns, all the meetings, all the times away. And, I know my colleagues will understand this when I say I'll never fully understand all that they sacrificed so that I could fulfill my duty in office, but I do know it was a lot. I also want to thank my uh, terrific staff over the years, and especially those who helped me build and lead such successful organizations, including my, my two personal office chiefs of staff over 22 years, Brian McDonald and, and Larissa Bounds, terrific leaders both. My executive directors at the NRCC when I ran the Republicans' campaign organization, Liesl Hickey and Rob Sims. My staff directors at the Energy and Commerce Committee. You've heard of the late Ray Baum, my, my colleague uh, dating clear back to the, the late 80s in the Oregon legislature and then uh, all the way uh, through just uh, a, a couple years ago when he passed away of cancer. Mike Bloomquist and, and Ryan Long uh, also did such terrific work as heading up uh, the best committee in Congress. And I want to thank the professional staff, many of whom have been on the floor today, my personal staff in Oregon and Washington, D.C. Um, we, we rely so much on these very smart, talented people, and the country is well served by their work. And I want to thank the thousands of volunteers and supporters of my campaigns over the years. We did it together, and I'd like to believe we did it for the right reasons, to leave our state, and to leave our country better places than we found them. I also want to thank some important mentors in my life. And of course, I'd have to start with my parents who grew up with nothing uh, during the Great Depression. And they taught me the importance of giving back to the community, of working hard, of always being honest, and seldom being judgmental. I want to thank those along the way who gave me some interesting career opportunities. My freshman year in college was spent at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And uh, I want to thank the folks at KTVF and the old KFRB Mighty 90 in Fairbanks who put a 17-year-old kid in charge of producing and directing the 11 o'clock TV news. Um, I'd never been in a TV studio before, and suddenly as a freshman in college, I was working every night doing that. To Roger Martin and Vic Atia, Gary Willems and Denny Smith, I learned so much from each of you. And to uh, Oregon, former Oregon Speaker Larry Campbell, time and again you showed Oregon how principled leadership produced real results, and so it was great sport serving alongside you as Majority Leader of the Oregon House. And of course, I want to thank the church and school and scout leaders who influenced my life in such a positive way. I'd give a shout out to the late Earl Fowler. He was my high school vice principal and student body officer advisor whose counsel when I was student body president of Hood River Valley High School in 1973-74 was as valuable then as it, it is now. And I remember one of the things he told us as, as student leaders, he said, when there is a leadership vacuum, fill it. You see, he expected us to step up and to lead and to take on challenges. And I'm indeed thankful for the opportunity the people of Oregon have given me to represent them in the United States House of Representatives. It is a responsibility I've always taken seriously, and I faithfully tried to do my best to represent them. After all, this is their office, not mine. I was simply entrusted to use the powers bestowed upon it 
for, the bene for their benefit, something I never forgot. It's part of why I've returned home nearly every weekend and will soon, uh, whenever we wrap up business here, complete my 644th round trip uh, back home. My team and I put special emphasis on taking care of the men and women who wear or have worn our uniform in this job, our, our nation's uniform and defended America's freedom. We helped thousands of Oregon veterans and their families receive the benefits they earned and deserve. We worked to strengthen the mission at Kingsley Airfield and open veterans clinics throughout the community and the district, and we, we helped save the veterans facility in White City. America is blessed to have these brave men and women who risk their lives so that we can enjoy ours in peace. America owes them a debt we can never fully repay. Having grown up on a cherry orchard outside of the Dalles, Oregon, I always had great admiration for those who farm and ranch and feed us. I worked hard to protect their way of life, defending farmers and ranchers from bad policy proposals. And I, I stood up for their water rights, I protected their land and ranching way of life, and I'm especially proud of the Steens Mountain Cooperative Management and Protection Act and the collaborative approach that it envisioned. Moreover, I supported ag research and water conservation efforts throughout the district, and while we made much progress on both fronts, my one regret is we could never find the key to unlocking a durable and fair solution to the water crisis in the Klamath Basin that could also pass in the Congress. We did make progress to improve forest management, even though I'm disappointed Congress has dragged its feet in enacting much-needed reforms to make our federal forests healthier and more resilient to climate change. It was 17 years ago last week, Mr. Speaker, that President Bush signed the Healthy Forest Heed the Gale Forum colleague Bruce Westerman and modernize how we manage this great American resource before the rest of it goes up in smoke. 